Hello, it's Karen Berniston here with an assembly video for one of our die sets. This is die number 1174, the Haunted Tiny House Add-ons, and you can check out all of our die designs at karenberniston.com. This is an add-ons set, so it is designed to go with our tiny house pop-up to convert it into a haunted house. With our die sets, you choose your card size. So for today's card, I decided to do a 5x5 five five square. So I started with a piece of cardstock, 10 inches by 5 inches, scored it in the middle for folding. Then to each side of my card on the interior, I added a panel of pattern paper that was 4 and 3 quarter inch square, and then a smaller piece of pattern paper that's 4 inches by 3 and a quarter. I use Lineco pH neutral adhesive, and I use that in my fine tip bottle, and we have both of those items on our website. Okay, starting first with the pieces that I cut out of our tiny house pop-up. So that's the foundation die for this add-on set. I needed to cut the house and the roof support. Those are on the same die. And then the chimney, which does have a brick stencil option if you run it through with an embossing sandwich. And then for the roof die that comes in the tiny house pop-up, there is an optional stamp feature. So if you coat that with ink, I just ran it across with a little cube of black distress ink. Then when you run it through your die cutting machine to die cut it, it will not only cut and score, but it will add that shingle pattern onto the piece. And the score line for the roof is just right up the middle, so I'm just going to fold that in half. For cleaning the ink off the die, I just use water and a rag, so I don't use any chemicals. With the tiny house, I like to decorate it before I assemble it, but first I want to find all the folds in the piece, and they all fold away from you. So I'm just going through and working the folds. There are six of them in the piece that will really help define all of the panels of the house for decorating, and since I'm making a haunted house, I'm actually going to hit all of those edges with some black ink. I'm just using a foam blending tool, but of course you could use a brush if you prefer. I'm also going to hit the chimney with a little bit of ink. I'm first going to find the score line at the bottom for the tapered tab, and then I find kind of a swirling pattern with my ink is really good for highlighting those embossed bricks. And then using the same swirl pattern on the back of the chimney, it will actually highlight the bricks as a deboss. Foundation pieces cut from the other set, and now I'm switching to the Haunted Tiny House add-ons. A great choice for base pumpkins, spiders, and bats would be Black Miri Card, and that is from the Paper Cut. There is a die in the set to cut a jack-o'-lantern overlay for those pumpkins, and I like to cut that out of orange cardstock and then just kind of dig out the pieces, you know, the eyes, the nose, and the mouth, so that I'm left with that overlay piece with holes in it. Then I layer that right over the top of those shiny Miri Card pumpkins to make my layered jack-o'-lantern. And then to finish out the jack-o'-lanterns, there is a die in the set that will cut a stem and vine. So I like to just add a little bit of glue right to the top of the stem of the pumpkin and then add on that stem and vine. For spider webs, I like either a vellum or a shimmer silver. Bat spiders, jack-o'-lanterns, spider webs, those are just straightforward die cut or die cut and layer. For the ghost, there is a stencil feature. So I'm going to die cut it from white cardstock and then before removing the paper from the die, I'm going to use a black pen through the stencil. Now, I like tripless fine liners from Stadler, and they come in lots of different colors. What I like to do on the eyes is just trace around the perimeter of the stencil. On the mouth, I just fill the entire thing in with black, but on the eyes, as I fill it in, I leave just a little bit of white showing to be a catch light. And then I just decided to brush a little bit of black ink around the perimeter of my ghost. There is a fence that comes in the set that's got some crooked boards and things in keeping with the haunted house look. Since my cardstock was a little lightweight and I wanted to use the fence to hold up some items, I decided to double it. There is a die in the set to cut four window backers. So I've cut those out of yellow. Now for the haunted tiny house, the wider part of the window is at the top. That kind of gives them more of a foreboding and ominous look. And then there is a die to cut loose shingles. So for that die, I went through two layers of gray cardstock, the same cardstock I used for the roof of the house, and now I have six loose shingles. 
A good time-saving cheat for things like shutters and loose boards is to use cardstock that you've added double-sided adhesive to the back of the cardstock before die cutting. So not only will that make your items stickers, but because of the extra cushion of the double-sided adhesive, it will push some of that cardstock up through that emboss feature and you'll get a little bit of the dimensional emboss basically for free. You didn't have to run it back through with an embossing sandwich. You also have a stencil feature on the shutters if you want to use it, maybe with a black pen, and that will add some detail lines to the shutters. But it does get embossed through those same openings, so it looks good even if you don't use the pen. I just like to show all the options. The loose boards also has a stencil emboss feature, so instead of using a pen on those, I've just moved them to a nonstick craft sheet and then just brush them with some black ink. And then I want a second set of boards, so for that set, I will actually use the stencil feature just to kind of show the difference. For my window frames and door frame, I'm using black cardstock with double-sided adhesive on the back. Since the door and frame are on the same die, I need to run back through with my door die using some brown cardstock, again with double-sided adhesive on the back, so that I can use the door out of brown and the frame out of black. Now on the brown one, I am going to use the stencil feature on the die to trace around the doorknob and the panels. So for a side fold card, like you would usually make with the tiny house, it is the first panel on the left that is the front of the house. So I am adding the black door frame, just lined up with the bottom of the house and centered, and then in the center I'm adding the brown door. Just like with the windows, the door and door frame are a little bit wider at the top than the bottom, and that just makes them slightly more creepy. So I'm gluing on the window backer, again, making sure that the wider part is at the top, and that's what's going to give the illusion that the lights are on in the house. And I have made the haunted house before where I've only used one window that has a yellow backer and the other one's like a dark gray. And that way it just looks like one light, you know, is shining out of the haunted house. So that's kind of a fun thing to try as well. Shutter placement, completely up to you. I do think having them crooked or hanging off their hinges adds to the effect. And then I add the windows and the shutters to the other three sides of the house. I do think it's easier to decorate the haunted tiny house when it's flat. So whatever decorations that you can kind of figure out where you want them to go. I think the ghost sort of flying out of the front door is a cool look. And then I like to use a couple boards to board up the door. And then I'm also going to add a spider web to the front of the house. And I'm going to have it hang off the right side a little bit. And I just need to make sure that I don't actually glue it down where it crosses the fold so that in the popped up position, it just sticks out from the side of the house. And then in the far right panel, which when it comes around will end up being the other visible side of the house, I'm going to add half a spider web and a spider. Okay, so now I'm going to assemble the house. So the first thing I need to do is add a strong adhesive in the tapered tab out on the end and bring that around to connect the house. And I think it's easiest to do that in the flat position. In that flat position, I can give it a really good press and make sure that I have a good connection. Then I want to reverse the house and flatten it the other way. Next up is the roof support. Now there are four fold lines in that piece. I'm just gonna sketch them in with a pen. You do not have to do that. That's just for the purposes of the video, although those lines won't be seen in the finished card. So the score lines will make triangle tabs on the outside and then these rectangular tabs at the top. And like I say, I like to work those in both directions. It's the little triangle tabs on the side that connect it to the house. And it is designed so that this edge right here is actually the same as the edge of the house and the point of the triangle on the tab just goes up to the point of the house. So just coating that tab with a strong adhesive. I just need to get it in there so that the peak of the triangle is at the peak of the house. And it's just going right along the edge. And then what you'll see is on the other side, then that just spans perfectly to do the same thing on the other side of the house. In this case, I need the adhesive on top of the triangle shaped tab so that it can attach there behind the house. So that's just the easiest way to get that roof support to span from peak to peak. And then of course, great idea to collapse it in both directions. 
For the tabs at the top, they just fold down to support the roof. And my favorite is to have the first tab towards the front of the house going to the right and the back tab going to the left. Now for attaching that inside the roof, the best way to do it is just to add the adhesive to one of the roof supports. So I'm gonna choose the one on the right. And then inside the roof, I want to collapse the house down and get the fold that's next to that tab right into the fold of the roof line. And then I'm just paying attention that I have about an equal amount of roof overhang on the front and the back of the house. So that first step is just to get the right tab down. Then I can add adhesive to the left tab and close the roof against it to adhere it. And just giving that a good press to make sure that the tabs are adhered inside the roof. And then now you can see how that's going to look. Chimney placement is completely up to you. Just some adhesive behind the tapered tab. I like to put it here in the sort of back section of the front roof so you see it when it pops up something like this. And then on the loose shingles, I like to just brush the edges with a little black ink and then just put them wherever I want to on the roof. So I had cut six loose shingles, so I put three on one half of the roof and three on the other. Time to get this haunted house inside the card. So first thing I'm going to do is collapse it down so that the base tabs are over the top of each other. If it has collapsed down where they're side by side, just reverse it so that they are sitting over the top of each other. And then it's going to be this edge right here that can line up anywhere along the fold of the card. That's up to you, but you do want to pay attention that you keep the house in the card in the flat position. And I'm going to attach mine pretty far up in the card so I have room for that fence coming out the other side. I'll start by attaching the back tab to the card. So I'm going to coat that with my strong glue. And because the tiny house really works best when the entire tab is really shellacked down to the card, I'm going to spread that glue out with my fingers, making sure that it gets out to the corners and everything. Then I can lift up the left side of the card to make sure I don't cross the fold as I attach that tab to the right side of the card. So just making sure I have a good alignment and I'm really pressing down that back tab so that it's attached to the card. So you can see here it's that back tab that's glued down. And now I want to add the adhesive to the other tab of the house. This time the adhesive goes on top of the tab. Again, I'm going to spread that glue out with my fingers so that I have a good coverage all the way out to the corners. And then keeping the house nice and flat, I'm going to close the other side of the card against the exposed adhesive. So just making sure that glue has a second to set up, then I'm going to carefully open the card. The first time I usually like to reach in there and kind of help the house open up, just make sure that the tabs don't pop off. Now for closing the card, the roof should hit the card and slide into the closed position. Sometimes it's a little stubborn when you first made the card. And what I like to do is give it a little help. And the way I do that is just take a bone folder and just kind of curl under that front right corner and that back left corner and it just helps that roof know that as it hits the card the way it's supposed to go is to slide into the closed position so it's optional but it does kind of help with operation to just give those two corners a little downward curl attaching a bat to the chimney is a good location because then it will look like it's flying and I'm gluing two bats back to back around the chimney. And I chose the position to the right because I knew I had room for that in the closed position. To attach the fence to the back of the house, I just need adhesive in the final fence post. And then I just glue that to the back of the house at the base so that it's sticking out to the left side of the house. And of course you have that fence and those pumpkins and bats and spiders and ghosts and things to use flat on cards as well. So it works great incorporating as part of the pop-up, but then also it does that double duty that you can use those items flat. The tiny house pop-up does have stepping stones, so you could use stones in front of the door, but I sometimes with the haunted house will just use a couple of boards. Okay, so we've covered all the pieces that come in the Haunted Tiny House add-ons. This is what you can make by combining that with the Tiny House pop-up. For my card, I'm going to incorporate now some of our other dies to finish up. Out of our Border Blends Argyle set, there's this great little tiny scalloped border, and I've cut that six times out of black cardstock because I think it'll look great just lining the edge of the orange pattern paper. That particular border has such a small scallop that it's really easy to trim down then to just fit 
whatever size that you need. And obviously that's completely optional. It would look great even without that border, but I just think it adds a little bit of pop to the inside of the card. We have several die sets that include trees, but the one I chose today is our landscape scene, mainly because it comes with a nice tree, but then also with a circle that can be used as a moon. Make sure you attach tall items out on the end of the fence so that they do not impede the opening and closing of the house. So I like to stick with like the second fence post in for trees. And I can check it by laying it down flat behind the fence. And if there's any branches that stick out, like in this case, just a little bit of this one, I can just prune the tree a little bit to get it a little smaller to fit inside the card. So then since I already checked the position, I can just add my glue to that second fence post and then just press the tree trunk to the back of the fence. Okay, and then once that sets up, I can give it a check. I'm a little worried about that branch that's just kind of really close to the chimney as the card closes. It seems to be working, but it, you know, I wonder if after it went through the mail or something, maybe something could shift and then it could get caught up with the bat. So once again, I'm going to prune a branch back a little bit. So you can always prune trees. That's probably your best bet when you want to make sure that you don't create any catch points. And of course I can add additional decorations to the fence and the tree. So I'm going to add a jack-o'-lantern and then a spider web and then a spider. And then as a place to write a personal greeting, I've layered two of our crosshatch ovals together and then I'll add that other jack-o'-lantern. And I definitely always avoid the area where the roof of the house collapses down on the right side of the card just to make sure that I don't create any catch points. For card fronts, I like to just repeat elements and use my leftover materials. So I have the same landscape scene tree. This time I decided to glue two of them together to make it a little bit taller and fuller tree. And then I've used some pattern papers and the same borders. I've got a moon, I've got a bat, spider, spider web. And then we have a happy Halloween that comes with a shadow that will be perfect for the front of the card. The two squares of pattern paper that I used for the front of the card are four and three quarters square on the outside one and then three and three quarters square on the inside one. When I make square cards, I like to make them five by five because then I can put that in an A7 envelope, a five by seven envelope and mail it and it doesn't require extra postage. But of course you are in charge of card size and you can use the Honda Tiny House inside a A2 size card. So here's one. Instead of using the landscape scene for the tree, I used the spooky tree out of our Halloween scene die set. And then here's another example of an A2 sized card featuring the haunted tiny house add-ons and that landscape scene used for the tree. And I love to end assembly videos with a couple ideas by our very talented international design team. I just love the color scheme in this card by Karen Aiken. She's used the fence and the ghosts as flat elements on the front of the card, and then when you open it, there's this great little haunted house inside. Frances Byrne also used the cute little ghosties in the jack-o'-lantern on the front of this card along with our iron fence, and then inside she's got the haunted house. Love the ghost coming up from the house on the roof. Here's a card by Kelly Booth, this time with the ghost coming out of the chimney. Lois has combined some decorator dies. We have Halloween elements and charms. I love the googly eyes on the spider. Sandy Diller made a wonderful scene using the floating floor from our house and fence die set and then the haunted house in a top fold card. And then for this haunted house card, Fran actually used transparency strips coming out of the chimney so that the bats would be suspended in the air. The Haunted Tiny House Add-ons die set is available now from a lot of your favorite local and online retailers, as well as from our website, KarenBerniston.com. Thanks for watching. If you click on the website link, you'll go to KarenBerniston.com, where you can find out information about purchasing these dies, as well as links to all my other social media accounts. You can subscribe to this YouTube channel and check out some of my other videos. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.